Welcome to this first lesson of the class. It's called Appliant Maintenance Methodologies, but it's really about fitting troubleshooting, the troubleshooting aspect of our work within the bigger framework of network maintenance. We're going to learn also certain models out there in the industry that allow us to not reinvent the wheel, but use something that works already. Now, the big question is, how does it fit? How does troubleshooting fit in a big maintenance and the broader aspect of network maintenance? And uh, a lot of you will, will say and will think, hey, I, I spend my days chasing ghosts, doing, responding to failures, and doing disaster recovery, which is something we want to avoid at all times, but it's going to happen. So, however, again, that's part of the bigger and broader aspect of our work as network administrators. And, uh, and some of those aspects will actually help in our troubleshooting uh, area. So documentation, very important. Uh, documenting will allow us to troubleshoot better next time, especially if more than one person is, or if a team of people are performing the troubleshooting task. Documenting is very important. Preventive stuff like backups, performance monitoring. We need to baseline our networks, learn or know exactly what's going on before we can learn to identify symptoms and isolate problems. So performance monitoring, performance tuning are also part of the troubleshooting aspect, although they don't have the same name. And, and sometimes we don't add them in the, in the big picture troubleshooting procedures. So we do all these things. Troubleshooting is just one tiny bit of that. Uh, although we may spend a lot of our days doing it. How do we make it fit in a structured way? How, how do we make it fit in a way that makes sense and in a way that uh, help us do a, a, a better job? Well, we have to think in terms of a structured approach to network maintenance. A lot of, our, of the things we do are going to be interrupt driven. There's, there's no denying, there's no escape to a router going down or a service provider going down. We can't avoid that, but if we're prepared for it, we have the proper documentation in place and we have the proper procedures in place, then that's going to help us right there and then when, when bad things happen. So again, it's not bad to have an interrupt-driven approach if we go with a structured approach where we plan in advance, we have a framework for troubleshooting as part of the big picture, then we're going to have a better uh, chance of isolating problems, discovering symptoms, and ultimately fix the problem. Benefits are, are clear and not always accomplishable, but uh, uh, less network downtime is something we, sh we should strive for, and that can be accomplished with a structured approach. If we know what our network looks like in a, in a normal, regular operation, then we can pinpoint when it's going wrong or when something's going bad. We can, we can pinpoint very difficult things to identify, for instance, performance issues. If a network goes down, people will notice you'll get a whole, a whole bunch of calls in your, in your uh, IP phone or in your cell phone. If the network is slow, you'll get a whole bunch of calls, but you may not even notice. Uh, people may not even complain, or sometimes it is a big problem. So network downtime, we have to qualify that and, and determine exactly what it means. Uh, that also is going to make us more cost effective. Uh, and because if we plan things, we can, for instance, schedule maintenance and, and open schedule and, and change windows. So we can do things after hours, minimize downtime, minimize uh, impact on users, and we're going to be more cost effective and, and better aligned to business needs and goals. Uh, some other areas outside of uh, troubleshooting are also benefited by it. Uh, network security is one of them. Again, if the network is down, a lot of times it's provoked or caused by a security incident. So establishing a, 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 structure, a structured approach to troubleshooting is going to help in doing that. Now, how do we do it exactly? Uh, well, I, I wouldn't say let's reinvent the wheel. I would say let's use some of the things that are proven and have been tested out there for years. The industry provides several frameworks and several models that we can use to establish our process and get to a, a cost-effective solution. Uh, one of them is, for instance, IT infrastructure library. This has existed for years, and it's a framework for not only troubleshooting, but for network services as a whole. So all of the network maintenance tasks around and within troubleshooting are part of that model. Why not use it 
to establish our own model, adjust it to our needs, or adjust it to our network, move on. Several other examples, some of them are industry-wide, uh, some of them are Cisco proprietary, for instance, uh, Cisco lifecycle services based on several stages where you can not, not only operate and troubleshoot the operations, but also prepare, plan, design, implement. You lay out your plan, you determine who does, who does what, and so on. Again, part of a, a broader uh, aspect and part of a bigger picture that involves a, a structured model. So don't reinvent the wheel is a message. Um, each organization will obviously have different needs and, and you will adjust one or more of these things or these models to your own scenario or your own situation. Uh, the important thing is to take something that's tested and, and proven and then adjust it and then use it. Don't spend six months trying to lay out your plan, start acting and working right off the bat. So that's, that's very important. Now, it's not enough to define or decide what your, your model of operations is going to be. You have to get down to the nitty gritty details. And so, and, and that's part of a, again, the structured approach. The, the point here is, yeah, select your model. In this example, the, the, the book or the content talks about FCAPs, uh, which if we go back to our uh, slide here, it's fault configuration, accounting, performance, and security. It's different aspects of the big picture maintenance plan, right? Well, that's going to have certain um, uh, big picture tasks or responsibilities, let's call them that way. But it, it's a must that you break those tasks into procedures. If you tell someone, hey, do this, the what to do, that's not enough. You should tell people how to do it. And that's the procedural part of it. How do we accomplish fault management? Well, we should have a, a fault management methodology. Uh, that includes, for instance, preventive stuff like uh, scheduled configuration backups so that if we lose our configuration of a router, we can recover it later, to mirroring to change management. There's got to be procedures for each one of those little pieces. And even that's not enough. I tell you how to do it, but I don't give you, if I had to tell you how to do it, but I don't give you the tools to do it, and to find best practices and guidelines to use those tools, then we're also in a, in a, in a poor situation. Uh, we need configuration management tools. We need to translate those procedures into tools and use things like network management systems based on SNMP, for instance. Use FTP servers for protected backups where we can upload the router configurations into an FTP server, protect them there, use role-based access control and things like that. Uh, backup systems to an FTP server, use syslog, use NTP, network time protocol. The tools need to be there to translate those procedures into something tangible. That's very important. As we go move forward, we're going to have more detail and, and discuss more detail on those topics. At the end of the day, troubleshooting fits in a bigger, broader perspective. It's important that we do it that way, and it's important that we apply a structured approach where we can actually use models and frameworks that exist in the industry to make our life easier.